So suppose the supply of law skilled labor uh, is given by L supply, which is uh, 10 times W. So W is the price, the wage uh, per worker, per unit of worker, where LS is the quantity of low skilled labor in millions of persons employed each year, and W is the wage rate in dollars per hour. The demand for labor is given by L uh, D is, is given by 80 minus 10 W. All right. Um, good. By the way, as you know, the labor supply, so who supplies? Well, for example, I'm a labor, I mean, I, I supply my labor. And who demands? The firms demand labor. All right. So this time the roles are changed. The firms do not produce labor. They demand labor. And consumers, which happens to be us, and hopefully uh, you in in, in, in in few years are going to supply the labor. Right? So the roles will be switched. Uh, what will be the free market wage rate and employment level be? Suppose the government sets a minimum wage, which is the case in almost all country, right? There's a minimum wage. Uh, in this example, it's $5 per hour. That's very pity. Uh, how many people would then be employed? All right. Uh, by the way, do you guys know what the minimum wage is in Toronto, uh, in Ontario? Uh, it's fourteen dollars an hour, I think, right now. Wow, oh, that's good. Very good. I think uh, in Miami they increased it to fifteen dollars in this elections. Um, this is so. Here, this is the quantity. All right, as usual. So, me meaning here that we denote the quantity by L, and this one is price. And here we denote the price by W. All right, so be careful about uh, which goes where. Uh, by the way, everything, the analysis would be very similar if you put quantity here, wage here. But then, I mean, the surplus, for example, wouldn't be the area between uh, above, I'm sorry, below the demand curve and, and, and above the price line. So because the price is going to be now on the horizontal axis. So you have to be very careful about uh, where you put uh, quantity and where you put the price. So all our calculations or, or sort of theories were built upon the assumption that quantity is on the horizontal axis and price is on the vertical axis. I don't know. Sometimes I make some uh, stupid remarks. I think they're obvious, but well, just in case. All right. So what is the supply curve will look like? So when W is zero, supply is zero. So it's a straight line. Okay, something like this. Uh, this is L supply. And the demand curve is when W zero, L is going to be 80. So let's say this is 80 units. And when L, uh, the quantity is zero, uh, W is going to be $8. All right, so the demand curve is going to look, oops, something like this. So let's say this is 80, I'm sorry. So that means the supply and the demand will intersect at some point, which is the perfect the competitive equilibrium price. Uh, I'm sorry, this is not what is P. This is the L competitive equilibrium. This is W competitive equilibrium. So how can I find that? Well, very simple. 10W is equal 80 minus 10W. So if you solve this, 20W is equal to 80. So that means W is equal to 4. So that's 4. And therefore, this is 40. So before, I mean, in this perfectly competitive market, uh, the minimum wage should be $4. And there's going to be uh, 40 workers who will be actually working. All right. But the government, according to this question, sets a minimum wage of $5 per hour. Well, the minimum wage should be above the perfectly competitive equilibrium price. If it is below the perfectly competitive equilibrium, meaning if the government says, uh, well, guys, you should charge price lower than $3, uh, it makes no sense uh, because nobody, I mean, the buyers and the sellers have no incentive to reduce the price below for anyway. So therefore, government cannot really reduce this price even further than four with a price ceiling. Um, so, or, or minimum wage. So the minimum wage is now $5. I, I put this uh, on purpose. What does that mean? That means at this price level, obviously, there's 
going to be a lot of people who would like to work. How many? Um, 50 of them. So 50, 50 people are actually willing to work. But the problem is the demand, the firms do not want to hire uh, that many workers. Uh, because the price is now 5, that means 80 minus 50, so 30. Only 30 firms or 30 units of worker will be uh, uh, demanded. Well, the thing is, what is going to be the market outcome? Meaning, how many workers are going to be hired? Well, here, obviously, uh, the demand will determine uh, the number of workers that is going to be hired. Uh, yes, 50 people would love to work, but only 30 of them can be hired because there's not enough uh, demand. So what does that mean? That means uh, this is basically what we call unemployment. Right? Unemployment is the difference between uh, the number of people who want to work at a certain price minus the number of people who can actually, uh, who do actually work. People who are not interested in working are not, for example, counted in, uh, in, 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 in part of unemployment. So let's say I, I say I don't want to work because, uh, you know, I have enough money. So I basically just, you know, chill. Does that mean I am going to be one plus for the unemployment number in Canada? No, because I am not interested in working. All right, so that's, that's a big difference. But obviously, nobody's asking people questions like, are you really interested in working or not? Or, you know, the jobless claims in the United States, for example. So they give some rough idea about how many people would love to work at a certain, you know, market price. And then they try to estimate, uh, you know, quantity supply and then quantity demand is known because it, it is the number of people who are actually working. So they subtract and then come up with the idea, the unemployment. Anyway, these are more like a macro stuff. So here the unemployment is going to be basically 40 minus 30. So it's 10. So 10 people will be unemployed. All right. Um, so here's one thing. Um, I just want to mention it. I'm not going to talk about, uh, well, I will just briefly talk about subsidy. So if you calculate the consumer surplus, producer surplus, uh, and everything after uh, a minimum wage, what you will see is that this is going to be consumer surplus. I mean, this is the firm's surplus, in fact, right? Because they are the demand side. The producer surplus is, yeah, what is the producer surplus, guys? Uh, let's call this area A, this triangle B, this triangle C, and this triangle D. So what do you think? What is the producer surplus? Is it A plus B plus C, or is it A, or is it A plus B? What do you say? There are three candidates now. So that's good. Thank you very much for all these uh, variations. So here, the producer surplus guy is just A, okay? Meaning this area. Maybe you're not, you were not maybe clear about what really A is, what really B is, but here is why. Don't forget this, at this price, it's true that 40 people would like to supply, right? So the supply, the quantity that would like to be supplied is 40 units. But the problem is, don't forget this additional 10 people, they're unemployed. Or, what does that mean? That means they actually cannot derive any surplus. So in order to derive or in order to create surplus, well, first of all, you have to be employed and receive wage, right? So surplus is if you are producer price minus your cost so this sur um, look, look, look. supply function means actually your cost function so at any given price how many people are able to supply this good means how many people can actually produce good this good at a cost lower than this price so that they can make some profit or maybe zero all right, so this is what supply means. So don't, don't forget this. 
Um, so here, yes, 40 people, I'm sorry, not 40, 50 people are willing to. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, so by the way, my previous calculation was wrong. Here, the unemployment is not 40 because the 40 is the perfectly competitive equilibrium price. The, the number of people who would love to you know, work at price five is 50, all right? That's, that's my mistake. So this number is 50 minus 30, which is the number of people who can work is 30. And so the unemployment is not 10, it's 20 units. But okay. those people at 50 were, were never employed because prior to the minimum wage, we only had 40. So shouldn't it still be 40 or no? No, no. Very good question. It should be 50 because <clears throat> now at a price five, more people. So previously, when the price was 40, 40 people wanted to work and 40 people hired. And so no unemployment. Now at a price five, more people want to work. All right, so I'm gonna say, you know what? I don't wanna chill because now the salaries are quite high. I actually wanna work and I search for a work, but I can't find it. And then now I become one of the unemployed, all right? So unemployment is always the number of people who want to work at that price minus the number of people who can work, all right? So that was my mistake. Actually, it's an important mistake. Uh, and so the unemployment is equal to 20. Well, again, when it comes to the producer surplus here, this additional 20, I mean, if you want to put B or C into your surplus calculation, these guys must be um, providing, I'm sorry, uh, must be driving some surplus. What does that mean? That means they must be receiving wage subtract they, they're going to subtract their cost and then the remaining part is going to so this is why we are calculating the area between the price line and the supply curve so basically that's kind of in profit for them right or benefit but the thing is these guys cannot work they're unemployed so therefore they cannot derive any surplus hence the producer surplus is going to be this a region only well obviously then the question is what is B then? Uh, well, in this game, I'm, I'm sorry, there's no game. In this market, there's only two participants. One, consumers, two, producers. Government is not really deriving any surplus because there's no tax. The government does not get benefit out of imposing um, a minimum wage. But what happens, the government disturbs the market equilibrium and creates this B area which is now goes to no one. And this is again a deadweight loss caused by minimum wage. 